Okay, so uh, well, we'll go ahead with our second case, which is von Willebrand uh, disease type 2B. Uh, and here are my disclosures for research funding and uh, speaker. So we're going to start with a case. Uh, this is one of my patients, a 33-year-old uh, who was 36 weeks pregnant and sought our advice about an upcoming delivery. Her past history included menorrhagia, bruising, epistaxis, dental bleeding, and postpartum bleeding with her first pregnancy six years previously. Her family history was significant for thrombocytopenia in the mother, brother, and aunt. And her laboratory tests showed that her von Willebrand receiving cofactor activity was less than 10%. Von Willebrand factor antigen was 51. Her eight clotting activity was 50, and her platelets were 36,000. So I have five questions. In addition to 2B von Willebrand disease, which our patient had, thrombocytopenia occurs in all but which complication of pregnancy? One, help. Two, preeclampsia. Three, acute fatty liver of pregnancy. Four, portal vein thrombosis. And five, lupus anticoagulant with the antiphospholipid uh, antibody. Okay, very good. Let's go on to question two. All but which of the following test results are typical of 2B von Willebrand patients? Number one, decreased high molecular weight multimers. Two, decreased risocetin aggregation. Three, abnormal platelet closure time. Four, platelet clumping on the peripheral smear. And five, decreased factor eight. Okay, all right, well that's, okay, very good. Let's go to question three. She asked, why are her platelets so low? You respond, it is because, one, von Willebrand factor uh, binding to platelet GP1B is absent. Two, von Willebrand factor binding to platelet GP1B is defective. Three, von Willebrand factor binding to platelet GP1B occurs at rest. Four, platelet GP1B binding to von Willebrand factor is defective, or five, platelet GP1B binding to von Willebrand factor is at rest. Okay, let's go on to question four. She is admitted in labor. Why do you, what do you order as first line therapy at delivery? One, DDAVP. Two, von Willebrand factor concentrate. Three, platelets. Four, von Willebrand factor plus platelets. Or five, von Willebrand factor plus antifibrinolytic therapy. Okay, we have quite a range here. Let's go to the final, final question five. She is discharged after an uneventful delivery. You recommend monitoring for postpartum hemorrhage for one, up to three days, two, up to seven days, three, up to two weeks, four, up to three weeks, or five, up to six weeks. Okay, well, very good, let's, let's go forward and we hope we'll answer all those questions during the talk. So you know, the disease von Willebrand disease story starts in 1926, over 86 years ago with Eric von Willebrand, who actually diagnosed the disease in his first patient, a five-year-old girl in the Island Islands who had severe menorrhagia and actually died of it at age 13 with a strong family history in which both females and males were affected and mucosal bleeding as the primary symptom. And he termed this pseudohemophilia because it differed in gender and type of bleeding. Um, epidemiologically, the prevalence is 1%. 
but if we look at symptomatic von Willebrand disease, it's 0.1% or about 100 per 100,000 uh, symptomatic patients. The prevalence of type 2 von Willebrand disease is 30%, and of type 2s, about a quarter have type 2B von Willebrand, which is 9 per 100,000 or about 27,000 in the U.S. So what is von Willebrand disease? It's a deficient or defective von Willebrand factor. It is inherited as an autosomal dominant disorder with variable penetrance, uh, and it affects both males and females. There are three types, the most prominent of which is type 1, and the most commonly severity is mild. Clinically, we see mucosal bleeding, including epistaxis, menorrhagia, GI, oral, and surgical bleeding. And in the laboratory, the von Willebrand factor received uh, cofactor is low, as is the antigen factor 8, and there's usually a long closure time. Multimers are quantitatively abnormal in type 1 or 3 and qualitatively abnormal in type 2. And so looking at type 2 von Willebrand disease in the center, we see that this is a disease of uh, qualitative uh, von Willebrand factor abnormality. So it's an abnormal molecule. Uh, it occurs in about 25 to 30 percent of all von Willebrand disease. Uh, again, autosomal do dominant with epistaxis, bruising, and these usually occur early in the disease. And because it's an abnormal protein, von Willebrand factor concentrate is the preferred treatment for this disorder. So what's the defect in von Willebrand type 2? The defect is von Willebrand factor GP1B binding to platelets spontaneously, that is at rest. So it is not available when you need it, when you have bleeding or postpartum, for example. This results in thrombocytopenia because the platelets are now sticking to von Willebrand factor at rest, and there is an absence because of rapid clearance of the high molecular weight multimers. So this is a schematic diagram of the glycoprotein, protein, which is von Willebrand factor. It's synthesized in endothelial cells and megakaryocytes and forms into these disulfide units, which we call multimers. They play a critical role in two ways. Number one, they bind uh, platelets through the GP1B receptor, mediating platelet adhesion, and they bind to factor A, protecting it in the circulation. The problem in 2B von Willebrand disease is a mutation in the A1 hot red colored domain, which is where the mutation causes a, uh, an increased uh, binding when it should not happen to platelets. On the right, you can see a, an SDS gel electrophoresis, and what you see in lane four is a type 2B patient, and you can see that as the molecular weight multimers go up, they have a loss of high molecular weight multimers. So what does von Willebrand factor do during a standard vascular injury, whether it's uh, surgery or uh, an accident or postpartum? Well, von Willebrand factor is secreted into blood, and it binds uh, on the vessel wall in red to exposed collagen. And it undergoes immediately a conformational change, opening it up so the A1 domain is available to bind platelets. That therefore allows platelets to stick to the vascular wall adhesion and stick to each other platelet aggregation. So the defect in 2B von Willebrand disease is a gain of function because of mutations in the A1 domain of von Willebrand factor. This results in the rapid clearance of the multimers, especially high molecular weight, so they are absent, and thrombocytopenia. In the lab, ristocetin-induced platelet act act ag aggregation, RIPA, occurs at half-strength ristocetin, which should not occur in normal individuals, and von Willebrand factor corrects this abnormality. So you can see in these two diagrams on the left, the two defects in von Willebrand type 2B, uh, what the effects are. So if you look at low ristocetin concentration, that is 0 0.3 milligrams per ml, and look up, you can see at the red line in patients with type 2B, they have aggregation at that level, whereas in normals, it is not present. And again, you can see in lane four again that there is loss of those high molecular weight multimers. So what are the clinical consequences of this uh, binding at rest? Well, von Willebrand factor binding at rest leads to absent high molecular weight monomers, low von Willebrand factor, low platelets. So at trauma, delivery, or vessel injury, there's no von Willebrand factor available to 
promote hemostasis. So this results in the severity, uh, early age uh, of presentation, mucosal bleeding, including postpartum bleeding. So um, this is just another schematic diagram. On the left, we have a normal individual who has a normal vessels vasoconstrict after uh, injury, the platelet plug forms, a fibrin clot forms, and there's no bleeding, whereas on the right there is the defect in von Willebrand uh, binding to platelets. Here we have the vessels vasoconstrict normally, but we can't make the platelet plug, and there's incomplete fibrin clot formation, so we have excess bleeding, which of course can equate in the pregnant woman to postpartum bleeding. What are the laboratory findings in pregnancy? Well, the platelets can range from 10 to 60,000. The bleeding time is prolonged because of thrombocytopenia. Now, the risticetin cofactor, which is the activity of von Willebrand factor, can range from as low as 17% but all the way up to normal range, even 200%. But the point is, it's an abnormal protein, so even if it's in the normal range, it's not active normally. The antigen, in the same way, can be increased from 77 to 230%, factor 8, 85 to 190%. The large monomers are reduced, receipt aggregation is increased at low concentrations at rest, and spontaneous platelet aggregation can be seen with platelet clumping, uh, even on a smear. So how do we distinguish the thrombocytopenia of 2B von Willebrand disease from other causes of thrombocytopenia? I have a listed a differential here. So you want to be sure that this is not gestational. Thrombocytopenia, uh, which is usually mild, uh, immune ITP, drug-induced or heparin-induced uh, thrombocytopenia, or even some of the inherited thrombocytopenias. In terms of systemic disorders, other disorders that may cause low platelets include preeclampsia, help, acute liver, uh, fatty liver of pregnancy, TTP and HUS, lupus, antiphospholipid syndrome, some of the infectious complications, HIV, CMV, EBV, as well as DIC, nutritional bone marrow disorders. So quite a differential. And it is well known from several large databases that the most common mutation in the A1 domain that causes 2B von Willebrand disease, they are missense mutations. Uh, and the other thing that's very critical to recognize is that while von Willebrand factor increases during pregnancy and it peaks between week 29 and 35, um, it's functionally defective. So that while we would have expected the bleeding risk to improve remarkably as a von Willebrand factor increases as in the red line, that just doesn't happen in 2B von Willebrand disease. And in addition, the platelets fall from weeks 3 to 37. So what do we know about the VWF factor 8 levels during pregnancy? Um, they increase, again, we said peaking at 29 to 35 weeks. The protein uh, is functionally defective. So even if the von Willebrand factor is 50% or higher, it may be insufficient for delivery. As von Willebrand factor increases during pregnancy, Adam TS13 decreases and the platelets fall. So peripartum bleeding is very common and even more common in 2B than, for example, 2 uh, type 1. What happens to the platelet counts in pregnancy? Thrombocytopenia may either develop for the first time, worsen, or recur. They may fall despite increasing von Willebrand factor. And they really reflect this abnormal von Willebrand factor that has increased binding to platelets and decreased Adam TS13. There's spontaneous platelet aggregation and prolonged closure times and that results with, from the platelet dysfunction. So do we know risk factors for bleeding in type 2B pregnancy? Well, if you have a loss of high molecular weight monomers, thrombocytopenia, or platelet dysfunction, they all predict bleeding in women who are pregnant. It is critical to recognize that the von Willebrand factor level itself does not. Okay, so. What are the levels of evidence for what we do? I should have had that none slide as well. There are very few published studies, and most of this is expert uh, opinion. Um, what do we do for coagulation testing in pregnancy? Well, in general, in von Willebrand disease, we check von Willebrand factor preconception and at 34 to 36 weeks. But you can recognize here that even if we get a normal level, it may not, in fact, mean that we have good hemostasis. We monitor platelet counts throughout pregnancy. 
Um, how about management of hemostasis at delivery and postpartum? We know first-line therapy is von Willebrand factor concentrate. The goal, of course, is to get the level above 50%, but what we're really doing is replacing the abnormal von Willebrand factor with normal functioning von Willebrand factor, which means it will only bind platelets when there's bleeding. So that uh, that is the first line of therapy. The platelets may correct with that. However, if bleeding is unresponsive to von Willebrand factor, then platelets may also be given to, to try to attain 75,000 units. And of course, we monitor for bleeding up to six to eight weeks postpartum, which is not uncommon for bleeding to continue in this group. Okay, well, I think we will then revisit the questions. Um, so number question one, in addition to 2B von Willebrand disease, Thrombocytopenia occurs in all but which complication of pregnancy? Number one, help. Number two, preeclampsia. Number three, acute fatty liver of pregnancy. Number four, portal vein thrombosis. And number five, lupus anticoagulant. Okay, great. Very good. So um, all of these are associated with thrombocytopenia except for portal vein thrombosis. And we have a wonderful learning curve. Great to see. Let's see here. Uh, so our next one, um, question two. All but which of the following test results are typical of 2B von Willebrand disease? Number one, decreased high molecular weight multimers. Number two, decreased ristocetin aggregation. Number three, abnormal platelet closure time. Number four, platelet clumping on the peripheral smear. And number five, decreased factor eight. Okay, great. So, very good. So this, was, this is a tricky question, truly, because we know there are decreased multimers. We know that the platelet closure time is abnormal because the platelets are low. We know that the platelets clump on the smear and that there's also decreased factor eight. But what the problem is, there's increased receipt uh, aggregation at low strength. So that's a great learning curve. Okay, let's go to question three. So our patient asks, why are her platelets so low? You respond, it is because, number one, von Willebrand binding to platelet GP1B is absent. Number two, von Willebrand factor binding to platelet GB1B is defective. Number three, the von Willebrand factor binding to platelet GP1B occurs at rest. Number four, platelet GP1B binding to von Willebrand factor is defective. And number five, platelet GP1B binding to von Willebrand factor is at rest. Okay, wonderful. That's excellent. I think we got the idea here. So the main defect, clearly an excellent learning curve. Thank you. You guys did a great job. Basically, the problem is von Willebrand factor is binding to platelets at rest so that neither von Willebrand factor nor the platelets are available when you have a bleeding problem. So this is why they have bleeding, thrombocytopenia, and, and the molecular multimers are not present. So question four, she's now admitted in labor. What do you order as first-line therapy at delivery? Number one, DDAVP. Number two, von Willebrand factor concentrate. Number three, platelets. Number four, von Willebrand factor plus platelets. And number five, von Willebrand factor plus antifibrinolytic therapy. Wahoo, wonderful. So we would use von Willebrand factor concentrate as our first line of therapy, and that's because DDAVP might increase the von Willebrand factor, but it's increasing a defective molecule, so it's not gonna work. 
we would use platelets, as 23% of you say, really is a very good answer as well, but we usually hold them until the patient shows us that they're bleeding on vomilobran factor concentrate. But excellent learning curve, you did a great job. Okay, so now we're on question five. She is discharged after an uneventful delivery. You recommend monitoring for postpartum hemorrhage for three days, up to seven days, up to two weeks, up to three weeks, or up to six weeks? Great, wonderful. And this is gonna help the patient because if you let her know that she may bleed up, for to, up to six weeks, eight weeks postpartum, and tell her to call you if she's having problems, this will actually help these women significantly and reduce morbidity and even mortality. Okay, that's a great learning curve. Okay, well I think we're done with the questions and we're ready for some uh, questions from the audience, if you have any, thank you. If it's not a pregnant patient, but just someone with a 2B, are they still at risk for six weeks to eight weeks? And also, I wanted to ask a question about the previous case. So, so that's a very good point. Um, let me say that again, because that's an excellent point. So pregnant women, uh, even without 2B vomilobran disease, the risk for bleeding can last up to six weeks. That's, that's a very good point. Thank you. No, but what I wanted to know is if they're not pregnant, if someone isn't pregnant, what are they still at risk for six weeks? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. In other words, if you've got a person with a von Willebrand's 2B, oh, I see, and they have surgery, okay, not pregnant, and they yes. have surgery, so that's and they have surgery, are they at risk for six weeks sure, off? Sure, sure. Well, I, I think the cr critical issue there is a person with a bleeding disorder needs to have replacement therapy, and if that's either inadequate insufficient or spotty in terms of inf you know, infrequent, they may have prolonged bleeding six, eight weeks, even a couple months uh, later. So it's critical to get the right drug in the right dose for an ongoing period of time. And I wanted to ask another question about postpartum for the previous case. Uh, how long is a person possibly um, less sensitive to eculusumab postpartum? In other words, you said there's some possible resistance to eculusumab during pregnancy. What about the postpartum period? Push the button, push the button. Oh. Um, it's not really that it's uh, resistance. It's just the volume of distribution changes during pregnancy. So okay. um, you don't have to worry about that at that postpartum. Great, go ahead. Uh, Marilyn, uh, uh, for the previous, the case with the pregnant woman, should we be worried about the, the baby in this case? Okay, so you're worried about whether the baby might have von Willebrand disease. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Well, well, certainly it's an autosomal dominant disorder. It can have variable penetrance. So we would expect that most of the children born of such women would not be as severe as the mother. Um, however, that is not always the case. Uh, we just had a case where the baby had severe thrombocytopenia um, but did not bleed at all. Um, so, you know, in general, autosomal dominant uh, with variable penetrance would suggest that the child would most likely be less severe than the mother, and we don't actually, for example, do cord testing or any of those sorts of things. Thank what, you. What is the effect of half-life or biologic life of the von Willebrand factor infusions? Okay, so it's generally dosed on, uh, in the beginning at 100%, at which would be about 80 von Willebrand factor units uh, per kilogram. And then it's given in about 50 units per kilogram every 12 hours because of its half-life. And then you can start to taper it to approximately once a day. This again is evidence uh, from experts. Uh, there have been several trials, but I don't know that there's any been done in a pregnant woman to speak of, so these, this, is our, this is what we do in general. And certainly, if we're having bleeding that is not responding, we'd use platelets or consider longer-term von Willebrand factor replacement. And unfortunately, that's usually what we require, is required in type 2B. Hi. Hi. Is there an element of pseudothrombocytopenia with, uh, with 2B, BW? 
No, that, that is a separate disorder completely, so not that I am aware of. Thank you. Thank you. How do you know when to stop the uh, vomilibrin concentrates? And the second thing is, what is the role of antifibrinolytics? Yeah. Well, first of all, I do not know the answer to your question, and I am going to tell you what I do. So I actually uh, talk with a patient as we're going through this and find out, are we having less bleeding? Are we stable? Um, generally, in a von Willebrand disease, when you have surgery, you can treat for about five days or so, general surgery, because what you're doing is you're making a platelet plug, primary hemostasis. Once that is secure, then you have secondary fibrin clot formation and the patient does well. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, because look at type 2B. We have a low factor 8 level, we have low platelets, we have so many things going on here. Uh, we often will treat for two weeks postpartum. That is not unusual. Uh, once a day treatment. Again, this is not evidence-based. There are no clinical trials. I wish I knew the right way to do it. I can tell you that I have failed. That is, I have several patients who have required longer than two weeks. Um, I think it's a very difficult uh, disorder to manage, but I think platelets are uh, certainly something we use. We don't generally use antifibrinolytics. Don't forget those agents, uh, in addition to von Willebrand factor, may actually promote thrombosis, and this is a period of time where that is also a risk. So we're weighing risks and balances. I would actually open it up to other experts here to hear how they do it. I don't think I have the whole thing figured out here. I'm sorry. I see there are none who are willing to say what they do. Yes, yes, please, this is, we should be learning. Just, uh, is there an increased risk of thrombosis with excessive use of uh, factor concentrate? Okay, that's an excellent question. Is there any evidence of thrombosis in patients who would use uh, von Willebrand factor concentrate? Um, the only one that I have seen, again, this is terrible, this is not evidence-based, is someone who had mild type 1 von Willebrand disease and had a clot in the IV in which it was infused at the time of surgery. Other than that, I am not aware of, I, I, it could happen, but I think in general, I would expect that risk to be quite low. The anti-fibrinolytics, as far as I know, the fibrinolytic system is waking up immediately after birth, and the, the fibrinogen is going down from 500, which is the average, to the normal one within a day or something. So I think because fibrinolytics is so strong at this point, at least for the first two, three days, maybe, and uh, I think this is the response to every massive bleeding of a any any cause except maybe not sabarachnid. 